Hi, I'm Harold Bell, your host for the Legends of Inside Sports and the way we were. Here on Inside Sports, we celebrate Black History 365 days of the year. Today, I would like to introduce you to a little known Black history fact as it relates to the bravery of two Black South Carolinians plus one. They created America's first modern day civil rights movement. The pictorial and detailed history of the movement can be found in the book Out of the Box in Dixie by civil rights photographer Cecil J. Williams. The book clearly shows the modern day movement started in Clarendon, South Carolina, long before Brown versus Board of Education. The Montgomery bus boycott, Rosa Parks, the lunch counter sit-ins in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Dr. Martin Luther King's historical march on Washington in 1963. You won't read about this black history moment in the Washington Post, the New York Times, USA Today, or see or hear about it on Unsung. The godfather of the civil rights movement were Reverend Joseph Delaney and his friend Harry Briggs. You can see a photo there of them on the left at, at the top. Uh, that's Harry Briggs on the left, the little guy. And the big six foot five guy is none other than the Reverend Joseph Delaney. In 1949, Reverend Delaney and Mr. Briggs organized a group of parents in Clarendon and formed a picket line and challenged school desegregation in the county. The Briggs versus Elliott petition bearing the name of Harry Briggs was the forerunner of Brown versus Board of Education. Their challenge was the first to move to the Supreme Court. Several years later, four other cases would evolve into Brown versus Board of Education. Famed civil rights attorney Thurgood Marshall would represent the plaintiffs. In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled segregation in the public schools was unconstitutional. My Spangon High School classmate and basketball teammate, the late Spotswood Bowling, would be the lead plaintiff in integrating the Washington, D.C. public school system. It was Bowling versus Board of Education. Reverend Delaney, for his efforts to free his people, the KKK burned his church to the ground. You can see Reverend Delaney, his wife, and three kids below the picture of him and Mr. Briggs observing the burnt out ruins of his church. Well, several nights later, the KKK tried to ambush Reverend Delaney and his family while they slept but were met with a hail of gunfire. Surprise, surprise, surprise. They turned tail and ran like the cowards that they were. The next day, the county sheriff issued a warrant for Reverend Delaney's arrest for attempted murder. Where was stand your ground when we needed it? And speaking of stand your ground, I recently read something that says stand your ground is like bleach. It works miracles for whites, but ruins colors. Well, Reverend Delaney and his wife and three children had to flee for their lives to New York City. The KKK celebrated his departure, but the celebration was short-lived. A stone throw up the road, Dr. Charles H. Thomas Jr. in the city of Orangeburg picked up the ball and continue to fight for freedom. I'll be right back to introduce you to the first family of civil rights in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Stay tuned and don't go anywhere.